when I dug into the data uh, in, in a paper I published before most of you were born, <laughs> uh, we looked at sort of hostile takeovers in the U.S. and the striking fact was that about one third of the Fortune 500 disappeared in a 10 year period. So there 28% got takeover bids and a bunch of others voluntarily merged. You know, that sounds, you know, if you're not a strategy person, and I'm not a strategy person, you go know, like, yeah, boring, whatever. But that was a really major shift in the organization of the American economy. And, and it was just, it was just vast. It changed the sort of the structure, conglomerates disappeared. Uh, companies bought into focus. They started outsourcing a lot more. Um, the idea that corporations exist to create shareholder value went from a crazy thing that people at Rochester said to, you know, the truth. <laughs> and so it felt like that was a really big transition in the organization of the economy. And yet my own field didn't have a lot to say about it. And so um, I discovered when I was doing job talks that I'd have to do about a 15 minute tutorial on Here's what voting rights are in corporations. Here's what a board of director does. Here's what a tender offer is. And I had to kind of teach myself this stuff about finance and accounting to be able to convey it. But it seemed really clear that some really major shift was happening in the organization of the economy it was going to turn out to be very consequential. And so once I started down that path, um, thankfully, because of events in the world, it was just uh, my research question I realized was, what the hell just happened? <laughs> because <laughs> there were enough weird things going on in the world. Like, wait a minute, corporations used to make stuff and now they hire vendors to make stuff. Where did that come from? Uh, wait a minute, it used to be good to be big. Now it's good to be small. How, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, corporations used to have internal labor markets and promotion ladders that would allow people to join the middle class and now they're lean and mean. And so there were sort of enough events going on in the world that what the hell just happened turned out to be a pretty good uh, ongoing research question um, because things kept changing. Where did that dot-com bubble come from and why did it collapse? Uh, so there, there were enough sort of changes going on in the corporate world that I always had some new thing to try to make sense of. And if you're the person that can bring sort of theoretical tools and methods to it, uh, then, then, then that's a big plus. I mean, if you're a journalist, you can say, look at this this crazy thing that just happened, but we have the capacity to gather pretty systematic information to, to unpack it. So, and I mean, the, the reason it was important was that I, I had grown up, you know, at least in the little bubble that uh, of organization theory where I've resided, you know, we believe that organizations are everything, that we live in a society of organizations and from the hospital you're born in to the franchise funeral parlor that drops you into the ground, uh, we live in this society of organizations that shape everything. And if that shape is radically changing, you know, we need to figure out why. So I dug a lot more into finance and started to see how financial markets had started to shape all kinds of social reality. Like we use phrases like human capital and social capital, not as horrifying, corrosive metaphors that undermine society, but it's kind of the obvious way to talk about things. Oh, you're going to college to invest in your human capital. Well, that's a terrible way to talk about college. I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> like, I, I thought we were in the education business. Turns out that we're uh, basically a factory for, uh, for human capital. And so it, it, um, uh, to, to me, that was sort of the, the, drive, the, the shift in the nature of the corporation and the sort of increasing centrality of finance. Um, it seemed like they didn't just stop in 1990, you know, when I, when I finished my dissertation or published a couple of papers, they just, they kept on going in, in ever more Baroque ways. And now we're living through this sort of generation long episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> 